Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wassalatu Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kulli lahzatin abada aradani amillahi wa afdalihi. Allahumma atina min ladunka rahmah wa 'allimna min ladunka 'ilma. Subhanaka la 'ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal 'alimul hakim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nawaina ta'alluma wa ta'alim wa tadhakkura wa tadhkir wa nafa' wa lindifa' wa lifarata wa listifada wa la hasa 'ala at-tamassuki bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu 'alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa du'a ila al-huda wa dalalata 'ala al-khair ibtigha'a wajhillah wa mardatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a lutfin wa 'afiyatin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma inna nas'aluka 'ilman ladunni wa mashrab as-safi al-hani ya wahab ya ghani Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-'ilma ladunni wa mashrab as-safi al-hani ya wahab ya ghani Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-'ilma ladunni wa mashrab as-safi al-hani ya wahab ya ghani wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin 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 ya rabbal alamin alhamdulillah we are on our last lesson, mashallah, for this for this um series. Um, inshallah, completing up the hadith sixty, and inshallah we'll continue sixty one the following year. Inshallah. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let me read to the hadith um for today. An Anas bin Rabi'ah taala anhu an Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qal la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsihi muttafaqun alay. وعن حارث بن وهب رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الا اخبركم باهل الجنه كل ضعيف متضعف لو اقسم على الله لابره الا اخبركم باهل النار كل عطل جواز متكبر متفق عليه وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه عن عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إنه لا يأتي الرجل السمين العظيم يوم القيامة لا يزن عند الله جناح بعوضة متفق عليه وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رب أشعث أغبر يونيجن رب أشعث مدفوع بالأبواب لو أقسم على الله لأبره وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الساعي على الأرملة والمسكين كالمجاهد في سبيل الله أحسبه قال كالقائم الذي لا يفتر وكالصائم الذي لا يفتر لا يفتر وعن أنس بن رضي الله عنه قال من عال جاريتين حتى تبلغا جاء يوم القيامة أنا وهو كهاتين وضم أصابعه رواه مسلم آخر الحديث وعن أبي درداء عويمر رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ابغوني الضعفاء فإنما ترزقون وتنصرون بضعفائكم رواه أبو داود بإسنار جيد اللهم صلي أضال صلواتك على أسعد مخلوقاتك حبيب الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أرد معلوماتك ومداد كلماتك كلما ذكرك وذكره الذاكرون وغفل عن ذكرك وذكره الغافلون 
اللهم صل افضل صلواتك على اسعد مخلوقاتك حبيب الله سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ارد معلوماتك ومداد كلماتك كلما ذكرك وذكره ذاكرون واغفل عن ذكرك وذكره الغافلون اللهم صل افضل صلواتك على اسعد مخلوقاتك حبيب الله سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم أرد معلوماتك ومداد كلماتك كلما ذكرك وذكره الذاكرون وغفل عن ذكرك وذكره الغافلون في كل لحظة أبدا عدد خلقه ورضى نفسه زنة عرش مداد كلماتك الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله إنك لا أسكت في نفع حديث في تدي إن شاء الله so yesterday we reached حديث 54 right and on this hadith, on the authority of Sayyidina Anas radiyallahu anhu, who reported that the Prophet sallallahu wasallam said, None of you becomes a true believer until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. And mashallah, as mentioned earlier, that this hadith is one of the four hadiths in which it was said right, by some of the scholars, in this, um, especially by Imam At-Tirmidhi and, other, and others, right, to be one of the four hadiths by which Islam revolves around. It's one of the hadiths that it says that was mentioned to be one of the hadiths by which Islam revolves around. Because in this hadith, right, which which will lay out the it will lay out um the the, the, the foundations of the upcoming hadith, the following hadith about the poor and the weak. Right, this hadith is basically the it is it is it is the it is the the principle, right, the foundational principle um to society. Right, to, to, to social living Right, the communal living and the society. That the the bottom line is what you would like to happen to you, then do that to other people. And that was demonstrated in the previous hadith whereby Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, he he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam that for that Allah subhanahu wa taala is in the assistance of his servant for as long as his servant is in the in the assistance of his brother. Right, so that so mashallah, you know, so so is a very is is jawami al kalim, right? Jawami al kalim, um, it is a is concise speech. This this really is is what it is, and what you love for yourself, then do it for other people. And of course, there is no narration that says min al khair, right? So which means you know what you love for yourself of goodness, because it could be that some people love for themselves what is harmful to them, right? So this this what you love for for yourself always has a of course has an understood meaning, you know, a foundational meaning. That it has to be halal in the Sharia, it is permissible in the Sharia, and therefore you love this for your brothers. You know, mashallah, right? And and mashallah, and so if, so if every single human being were to were to to apply this principle, then you will have a society of of amazing people. You know, and and if it's very, you you will have a uh, you know, like the best society will form just by this one principle. This one principle, and the best of societies will form if everybody does what. They love to be done to them, right? So, for example, if if like if you love that that you know to keep that that your corridor is always kept clean, then you keep your corridor clean, right? If you love right, that people don't make so much noise in the night, then you don't make so much noise in the night, right? So if you love and 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 so on and so forth, you know what you love right for yourself, you love peace, you love harmony, right? You love that you know for, for your children to be able to go downstairs and play and be safe, you know, no one harming them. If you love all this for yourself, then you do this to other people, right, mashallah. Um, and subhanAllah, that's it, right, <laughs> mashallah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's like, it, it is, you know, it's a, it's a short, short statement. And it's, it's just the entire of, of social living. The whole of, of society falls on the, onto this hadith. All of society is just this one hadith, you know, mashallah. So, mashallah, this will be complete iman. When he says none of you, none of you, none of you truly believe, right, this will be complete iman, right? So, and and the, the the narration here, the story here, right, is that it's in Abu Huraira said radiyallahu taala anhu. He said, right, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, whoever, like, who will take these words from me, right? Who not whoever, afan, who will take these words from me and act on them? And teach them to those who will act on them, right? So he asked, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who will take these words on me and act on them and teach those who will act on them?" And Sayyidina Abu Raira was there, as you mentioned. Sayyidina Abu Raira, he was uh, homeless and he would spend his time in the masjid. And therefore, he heard the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say this, right? So he says, "Me, I will." He said, "Ya Rasulullah, me." Right? And so Rasulullah took my hands. He, he narrated. He took my hands, and he said, 
Stay away from the haram and you'll be the most worshipful of servants. Be content with what has been apportioned for you and you'll be the richest of people. Be good to your neighbors and then you're a mu'min, you're a believer. Love for others what you love for yourself and then you're a Muslim, right? Right, so, so, so he gave four principles, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He gave four principles to Sayyidina Abu Hurairah. Right, so, so if you want to be worshipful, stay away from haram. If you want to be rich, then be content. You want to be a true believer, be good to your neighbors. It's a sign of belief. As he said in another hadith, none of you truly believe until he loves for, and, 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 uh, he, he does not truly believe the one whose neighbor is not safe, right, from his, uh, uh, from, from his harm. Right, and then in another hadith, uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, whosoever believes in Allah and hereafter, be kind to their neighbor. And right? these are the statements of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Mashallah, the entire principles of communal living, you know, mashallah, stay from the haram, be content, be good to your neighbors, and love for others what you love for yourself. Right, that is a part of being a Muslim. Like never, like having having envy is far from being a Muslim. Hating right, others is far from being a Muslim. Wanting destruction to happen to other people is far from being a Muslim. And we Allah make us of the best of people with the best character because our Prophet is someone of the best character. It's something that I will always say like, when I, when I teach the children right, in 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 Masjid, I will always tell them you know because because it's la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. You know it's so. <laughs> You know, I can tell you one thing as a teacher, from the point of view of a teacher, I can tell if a child is exposed to the media or not just by how the child speaks. Right? Just by how the child speaks, what, what comes out of that mouth, I can tell. Is this child um, you know, very exposed to the media or is this child completely protected right, from the media and it makes a world of difference. It really does make a world, a world of difference. You know, and sometimes, um, uh, like, like when, when you speak about certain things, when you speak about certain things, uh, you know, to them, right? Those who have been exposed to the media, they're so violent, right? They're so violent, they're so harsh, they're so rude, right? In the way they speak, you know, is is and, and it's and it's appalling. And those not exposed to the media, they're more gentle, right? And 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 especially those who have been only exposed to the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, Masha Allah, I will, I will say to them, you know, when when I teach them, and 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 they will say, okay, you know, we should punch people, we should kick people, we should we should we should beat people, we should this, we should that, and they will say these kind of things. And then I'll say to them, where do you learn this? This is not from the Prophet. He never said these kind of things. Right? He never went around saying, you know, you should you should you should slap people's faces. You should hit people. You should this, you should that. And I hear this a lot from our from our children. You know, and I and I I would just say to them, is can you imagine Nabi Wasallam saying this right, to people? Right? Can you imagine him saying it? They were like, No, he'll never say it. Then why are you saying it? Like, why are you saying it? Why are you saying you, know, you should punch people's faces or you should slap people? Or you should, you know, you, you know, you, you should, you should, you should be, 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 be hard to people, or say bad words to people. You know, it's one of whose, whose, whose way is this? Huh? It's not the way of my prophet. So the Where are you learning? Where are you learning this? All this from? Of course, from the media. Nowhere else. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's not from the. I hope it's not from the family, right? But you know, it's from the media. So be wary. Right? You're, you're, showing, you're showing your kids too much, you know, violence. It's, it's just very grievous. Right? It's, it is grievous. Right? So. Then now comes the flip side of the hadith that you mentioned that if a hadith is true, then the, no, of course hadiths are true, right? But by the truth of the hadith, the flip side is also true. So should we hit for others or we hit for ourselves? The answer is yes, right? As long as it's aligned with the religion, right? So if you hit for, you know, misguidance for yourself, you should hit it for others. If you hit for sins for, your, for yourself, you should hit it for others. And on this line comes our love for the Prophet's family, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As much as you would love for your descendants to be to be to be to be kept on the right path, you should love it more for the family of the Prophet wasallam that they are kept on the right path. As much as you hate that your own children, you know, disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should hate it right for the children of the Prophet wasallam that they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you see them around you today, right, to have your you try your very best to assist them. The learning points of this hadith is believers are one body, one soul. Right? We should love for others what we love for ourselves. This is the completion of someone's faith. Right? Um, uh, the, 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 the kamal, kamal iman, right? the, the, the perfection of someone's faith. The believer brings goodness to all on earth. This is the way of our Prophet. Wasallam, and please walk the way of our Prophet. Wasallam. Okay, Haritha bin, the next hadith, Haritha bin, bin, bin Wahab, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, reported, 
I heard the Prophet wasallam saying, Should I not inform you of the people about the people of Jannah? It is every person who is modest and humble before Allah, and a person who is accounted weak and looked down upon. If uh, but if he calls out to Allah, Allah will definitely give him what he desires. Now, shall I inform you of the inmates of hell? It is every violent, impertinent, and proud man. Subhanallah. Like, right there, right? We just spoke about it. We just spoke about it. In the other hadith. Right? And, 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 I, and, I, I, and I'm going to keep highlighting this over and over again because apparently, you know, people are not paying attention. They're not paying attention to how the media is, dis- is literally destroying your children. You know, and literally destroying the Muslims. Right, so much violence in the way they speak and the way they behave, right? And it's all attributed to what they're watching. You know, it's all there. Right? And so be careful. You know, be careful. What are you feeding them, right? From from this from the middle of their houses. You know, subhanallah, so watching all this superhero nonsense. Right? It's literally superhero nonsense. Right? Stop it. Right? Our our society needs to stop it. Right? Stop feeding our children filth. Right? And stop feeding our children um the way of the ways of the devil. The ways of 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 this be, of 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 the the this, the most horrid kafir in time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I stop feeding them all these things and feed them the way of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. People keep saying, "Oh, I want to, I know, I want them to love the Prophet. I want them to love the Prophet." On the same line, they go and then they they, they bring home, you know, um, Spider Man or they bring home, you know, whatever. Um, and on the same line, right? on the same line, they bring, they bring home all this, you know, fighting stuff, you know, and you're destroying your boys. You're destroying our imams. Right? Subhanallah. <laughs> I know I sound like so so fed up. Right? But I am. I am frustrated. Right? That that you know people are not listening. Right? They're not listening and 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 it, and then and and, it, and and this is something that is a choice. It is a choice what you bring what you bring home to your to your children. It is a choice. Right? Um, and you're feed, and you're feeding and literally you're feeding them filth. Right? You're feeding them uh, like how you would never feed your children, you know, like pork, you know, or you'll never feed them haram food. You know, like alcohol. You never, you no, no parent in the right mind will give the child alcohol or you know a pork or whatever. Yet we have so many parents, you know, just just shoving into their children's you know um uh souls and minds and hearts, all this filth, like literally filth, right, in movies and 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 shows and whatsoever. Like our society, we need to wake up. <laughs> we just need to wake up, right? That you know, I mean, as as a teacher, that like, I I just I just see it so much. That it is grievous, right? It is grievous, and it's only by my love for society that I'm just going to say it as loud as I can. I right? stop it. I right? stop feeding your children filth. Stop encouraging them on this rubbish of all this, you know, Spider Man and Batman and 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 I don't know what man and whatever, you know, all this, all this. It just complete. It does. It does nothing for your children in benefit, and it harms them in every way, every single way. It harms them. And you are responsible for that, and you'll be held accountable for that. Allah hawla wa la quwata illa billah. May Allah protect us from this kind of, from this kind of, from this kind of um, calamity in our families. Um, naam. Okay. So, so he says, Allah alaihi wasallam. Right. Say, say, al Haritha bin Wahabin. Right. He said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say, Shall I not inform you of the inhabitants of of Jannah? And he said, Every da'if, right. Every weak person. Mutadarif, right? Someone who is um a weakened, law aqsama ala Allah. If he takes a vow, it is an oath by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. La abarrah, Allah will definitely give it to him immediately. Allah will give it to him, and that is how Allah's love for the weak, right? And then he says, "Shall I not tell you about every about about the the, the inhabitants of the hellfire? Kull atul jawaz mustakbir." Right, uh, uh, a mutakabir, mutakabir or mustakbir. There are two narrations. The one in my book here says mustakbir. The one here says mutakabir. Right? So there are two, there, there, there are two. I think there are two, um, there are two narrations. Let me find. Let me check the another riwayat. Okay, I check the other riwayat. It's mustakbir. It's not mutakabir. Because I memorized it, mustakbir as well. Mustakbir, not mutakabir. Okay. Uh, naam. Okay, so kul, uh, there could be another riwayat, Allahu alam. Right, but to the riwayat that I checked, it says mustakbir. Naam. Um, naam, kulu da'ifin. Right, kulu da'ifin, someone who is weak, you know, or weakened in the society. Right, so why are the, why are those who are weak in Jannah? Because those who are weak is closer, they are closer towards being humble. Right, they are closer towards being modest and humble. 
right so it um uh, this which is why and these are traits that is beloved to that is these are traits that are beloved to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and of course beloved to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mutadha'if right is someone who has been um like for example you might you might say mutadha'if is someone who is oppressed right? oppressed by others made to be weak right so they are weakened by others right they're bullied right? they're bullied by others mutadha'if right they are bullied by others right but these people right because they're being oppressed and because they're weak right allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stands to their uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will manage their affairs, right? So, if they were to make a vow, take a vow with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will answer them straight away. There's a story of a man, you know, and much of there are many stories about this, um, about all, all these matters, you know what, mashallah. Um, uh, the, and today's our last lesson, so I'm just going to take my time. <laughs> okay, lah, I'm, I won't take my time, but, but you know, I'm just, I'm not going to limit myself to 45 minutes. Right? If, I take, if, I take half, if I take an hour, I take an hour. Um, inshallah. <laughs> okay, right, so I need the story of this man. Um, he goes to his sheikh. You know, I think I might have mentioned this story before in other classes or in this, or in this class. But I'll just mention it now. Right, so he goes to his sheikh and he says to his sheikh, Yeah, sheikh, you know, teach me the, teach me the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so it is said that Allah has 99 names and Allah has the greatest name. Right, the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so and if anyone were to call unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this name, Right. Um. Then Allah sh- would would immediately answer this person, and there are people amongst the weak, right? Whom that like, if they were to cry out to Allah about anything, Allah will answer them immediately, right? So this this student asked Shay, "Oh Shay, I heard that you know the the, the greatest name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Could you tell me?" And then she said, "You can't handle it. Right? You can't handle the greatest name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It is a responsibility, right? Because the one who calls Allah by this name, he gets his du'as answered immediately." So the student is a bit upset, you know, that the Shaykh would not give him the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Shaykh would not trust him. So so the, the Shaykh realizes that his, that his student is upset. So he says to the to teach, to teach, to teach the student a lesson, he says to the student, you know what? Okay, tell you what. Right, take this um this money, right, and go to the marketplace and buy me some bread. Okay? Just go to the marketplace, buy me some bread. So the student, you know, he's curious what was what the Shaykh is up to. Right? So he takes the money, he goes to the marketplace. So while he's in the marketplace, you know, there were this um like policemen, you know, who was who were patrolling the marketplaces and they were and they were like kind of bullies, you know, they were, they were bully the people in, in the in the streets. Right. So there was this um one of these officers, you know, who was bullying, you know, a really old and feeble man right, who was walking along the marketplace. Right? And he was he was pushing and he was, you know, prodding him and whatsoever. Right. So he was oppressing this poor old man. Right? And the she and and, and and so and the student he was watching this and he was thinking to himself, you know what? If I had the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I knew the the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I could definitely help this old man, you know, um against this tyrant that that, that, that is that is prodding him and pushing him and bullying him. Right. So so he got you know, he, he so he thought, you know, see I have I have proved to my Sheikh that he should teach me the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he goes back home, you know, and he um uh, goes to his Shay and he says, Oh Shay, I guess what I saw in the marketplace. There was this old feeble man who was walking along the, the marketplace, minding his own business. I and this 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 bully of a policeman or officer, and this bully came and, and he was it was harming him and pushing him and prodding him and and just hurting him. I right, Shay, you know, had you given me the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like I had I had requested, I would have definitely helped this old man and made dua against this 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 bully that is there. Then the Shay said to him Describe the old man for me. Right? And so he described the old man. You see, he looks like this, and his, and his, and his face is like this, and so on. Then the sheikh said, That old man, he is my sheikh who taught me the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That old man himself knows the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't you see? He did not use Allah's name against people. You are so ready to use it against people. Right? But he is humble, he is gentle, and he's making dua for people. Because Allah knows, and 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 and, and, we, and we know that if this if my Shay were to make dua against the the, the police officer or that 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 that, that shurti, you know that the officer, you know, Allah will answer him immediately. Uh, immediately he'll be answered, right? And and mashallah, he is a mercy as as uh, as as the our prophet Allah is a mercy to the world. Actually, you're not ready for this name. You're gonna make dua against people, 
you know, mashallah. And, and mashallah, these this, this, this poor people, they are the ones who are always being oppressed. They are the ones who are always being sidelined. They are the ones who are always being pushed away, pushed aside. Yet, you know what? They're so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they just took an oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, immediately Allah would answer them. And but mashallah, most of them, these are the, of the awliya, you know, most of them, they, they, they abstain from the world and most of them, they don't, you know, they, 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 they never dua against other people, mashallah. And in the, in the Hadrami tradition, there are many stories of them. Right, whereby they, if they make dua, then, 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 the, the dua will come, then, then. Right, but they never make dua. Right, but they live a life of poverty, they live a life of, of, of simple, of, of, um, of zuhud, you know, of abstinence. But they can dua for, for mountain of gold because they are the inheritance of the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu himself is an example, right? He lives a, a, a life of poverty. He can make, he can ask Allah for a mountain of gold if he wants, right? But he don't, right? And then he says here, you know, shall I tell you about every inmate in, in the hellfire, right? And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, every, um, and by he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, every, you know, harsh, Right, every harsh in a kulu otulin jawels in mustakabir. Right, every harsh, violent, you know, impertinent person, right, jawels, right, they just, just overboard, you know, in the way they are. And this is what I was talking about earlier. You know, our children are learning to be like this, right, because they're watching all this, all this, you know, movies that have a lot of violence and pride in there, right, so they're watching all this filth. I, and they are being this way, and and it, and I'm seeing it very, very, you know, I'm seeing it in my classes, right? That that the, their first response whenever I, I speak about anything, you know, their first response is violence, 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 you know, um, and and this is really not the way of my of, of our prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He never responded with violence, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In fact, he hated violence. He was always gentle. I right? so tell them, you know, you know what, violence and 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 pride and and harshness, this has no place in Islam. Right, this is not the teachings of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So about Haritha bin Wahab, not much to say about him. He narrated for Hadith. And he was actually the stepson of Sayyidina Umar. <laughs> right, mashallah. Um, one of Sayyidina Umar's son, uh, Ubaidullah, right, uh, bin Umar, right, that, well, that is, that is the, um, uh, brother, right, of Sayyidina Haritha bin Wahab, right, half brother. The point of this hadith is to encourage people on such traits, on such traits, and to honor people who have who have traits of ahlul jannah, of modesty and 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 and, and um humility, right? A warning to people who have the traits of harshness and violence, right? And these are the traits of people of hellfire. Right? Humility is always desired and beautifies all matters, whereas arrogance is a barrier between Allah and His creation, and arrogance is a means by which a person is flung to the hellfire. As we know that, not, that if someone's heart has a seed of arrogance, they will never get into Jannah. Humility, humility towards Allah and the believers will result in eternal bliss. Arrogance and pride leads to punishment. The inhabitants of paradise are described with softness and kindness, while those in the hellfire are described with severity and harshness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us those uh, make us those of those who are gentle and, and, and kind and soft. And inshallah, that is the way of our Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, the next hadith. Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on a day of, of judgment, on a day of resurrection, a man who is bulky, samin and azim, he's, he's huge and he's fat and he's bulky, he will not wave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even the wing of a mosquito, right? It means he will weigh nothing if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? This hadith is just a physical manifestation of an inward reality. Right? How many people boast, how many people show off, how many people, you know, they act like they're big people, but they are nothing. Right? They are nothing. They are worthless on the inside. So on the on the outside, they show off their wealth, they show off their power, they show off this, they show off that, they show off their, their looks, they show off everything. They're big bullies on the outside. But on the inside, they're completely empty and pathetic. Right, this is what Allah, Allah, uh, uh, Rasulullah is pointing us to. Right, don't, don't judge people by their outward. And there's gonna come another hadith about those who are weak. Right, don't judge people by their outward. Just because someone on the outward, you know, is showing off and is, and is, um, is showing off and is, is, um, uh, parading themselves here and there. Right, and, and they're bullying people and they are, and they, and they are, you know, um, 
uh, they're bullying people around, right? Just because you know someone's like that, right? Don't be afraid of them. They they have no worth of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala on their judgment, right? For those who have no belief and those who have not done any righteous deeds, right? So this is a physical manifestation of an inward meaning of arrogance, right? These people are fakes, right? Basically, they're fakes, right? Um, um, they. And because it's so, they're so worthless on the inside, right? They assert themselves on the outside to try and cover up, right? For what they are empty about on the inside, right? So only on the outward they seem great, but on the inward they are nothing. So don't fear them, right? Don't fear them, right? And don't be one of them, right? Don't be those kind of people where on the outward you show off and you show off and you show off, then on the inward you are nothing. There's nothing there. There's no fear of Allah. There's no love for Allah. There is no um, pleasure if Allah's decree. There is no shukr. There is no gratitude. There is no sabr. You know, it's just emptiness on the inside. There is no worship on the inside. It's just outward, you know, um, just just um, assertion and outward uh, bullying and outward, you know, uh, violence and aggression and so on. Right? And people, that have Muslims who are like that. On the outward, they go, you know, they, they, they go online and they curse this one and they criticize that one and they, and they speak and they speak and they speak and they speak and they speak, right? But for all, you know, on the inward, Allah has, Allah sees nothing of worth on the inward. And the place of where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at is our inward. You know, mahal nadhar li rab is the, the place where he gazes at is our inward. So he has no care for the outward. And we took this hadith before that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed Allah does not look at your outward form nor of your physical being, but he looks at your deeds and your intentions. You know, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, what is considered are your deeds and your closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is inside is what is considered. Right, not your outward achievement that you go around boasting about, right, that you go around, that you go around, you know, um, in, uh, pushing into people's faces or shoving into people's faces about. The following hadith, right, this is the opposite, right, it's the opposite of the previous hadith. The previous hadith is, you know, arrogant and showing off and having all this stuff, but on the inside, nothing, that right, means nothing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is on the other side. You know, whereby people might see this person as worthless, he's disheveled, he's shaggy, he's dusty. You know, people chase him away, right? Because of like they, they think that they think that he he wants money, they think he wants stuff and whatsoever, right? And then but this person is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he makes a dua to Allah, Allah answers him straight away. Which means that he can very well make dua for richness, but he is not. And he is not making dua for richness, right? So, um, Sayyidina Abu Huraira reported that Rasul Sallam said, Many a person with shaggy and dusty hair, dusty and driven away from doors because of their poverty and shabby clothes, if they were to swear by Allah that something would happen, that means they can take, take, take an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will certainly make it happen. Right? It will, Allah will definitely give it to them. You know, mashallah. And there are many examples of people who are like this in the history of Islam, right? But on the outward, people laugh and people make fun of them and people, you know, jest and whatsoever, right? But on the inward, they are the, the beloveds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are awliya illah, right? They are of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa Allah subhanahu Allah, right? Um, uh, so here, ne- never judge people on their outward, right? Never judge people on their outward, right? How they are, you know, um, how they look at, and how other people treat them, right? And in fact, you should treat every single person with the highest respect. And if someone comes to the door and they're disheveled and they're, and they're shabby, right? treat them as if they're like, you know, Al-Habib Umar, you know, coming to the door and, and you, how you would you would honor them and serve them. And that is how, you know, uh, you know there's a statement whereby Al-Habib, he says that every single time, every, every person who comes to Darul Zahra, right, treat them as if they are Habib, as if they are Habib Umar. How will you treat Habib Umar when he comes to your house? How will you treat him? Of course, to extend it, how will you treat the Prophet Sallallahu if he comes to your house? You know, Masha'Allah, there's a narration that if someone serves food to um to those whom they know and has come to their house, right, then uh, it is as if they have served the Prophet And if someone serves food to those whom they don't know who has come to their house, then then in the narration it says it, it is as if they have served Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatness of it. Eh? Right. So mashallah, you imagine, you know, if you see someone coming to your house and you feel in you know, a bit of a disdain or you feel repulsed by that person, just imagine if this person was Khidr, if it was Nabi Khidr coming to your house to test you. You know, and we know the story of in in, in Rasul Rahin, you know, I hope you know and inshallah we know the story of in Rasul Rahin of the of the angel that takes a disguise as a man and he goes and tests three people. Like one of them has no hair, one of them has sickness in his skin, and one of them is blind. And this angel tests each and every one of them, 
right by by taking on a form right, that is you know uh, this heveled and you know and and people are repulsed by you know mashallah and how these people feel only the last one he passed right, the test you never you don't know that the one that came up to you to ask you is an angel testing you you don't know if it's khidr right so think to yourself all these things and and consider every person to be a wali from the awliya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maintain a husnul zan a good opinion with everybody around you Inshallah. I so when they if they were to um take an oath by Allah, Allah will make, make it happen for them. So never judge a person by how they look. Have a high opinion about everyone around you. These people, their du'as are answered immediately. An example of such people is Sayyidina Uwais al Karni, right? Whereby he was someone who was unknown and people will look down on him. Right? But if he made du'a to Allah, as our, as our Rasul knew, if he asked Allah for forgiveness for someone, definitely that person needs forgiveness. And Sayyidina Omar and Sayyidina Ali were, were instructed by the Prophet Sallallahu to look for Uwais al Karni right? and ask for his forgiveness. You know, so, mashallah, the great Sahaba are told to ask. For the for uh for always in the current to make to seek forgiveness for them, the other person will be Bahlul, right? Bahlul, the 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 brother of Harun al-Rashid, right? Where people would go, would make fun of him and they would they would you know they would they would mock him, but he knew deeper secrets, you know, mashallah, right? And if he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa taala, straight away Allah will answer him, right? And 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 closer to our hearts is you know Al Habib Hussein, um Al Haddad. Right, whereby he's disheveled. If you look at him outside Dar Mustafa, he sits there on his mat. He has, you know, his 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 pictures out. He has his milk that he sells. You know, he sits in the sarong. You know, in a in a in an izar like in a, in a waist cloth, right? And then he 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 calls out to people, come here, come here, mari sini, mari sini, and so on. Right, you know, mashallah, he's disheveled. He's, you know, mashallah. Right, but Allah knows, right? He makes a du'a. It happens straight away. Right, straight away it happens. He makes a du'a and it happens. May Allah grant us to ask of such people in goodness, inshallah. Okay. Um, the lessons from this hadith is never judge on the outside. Right? Because our religion only judges on the inside and not the outside. And of course the outside should 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 you know be in line with the inside. Right? As in the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma ja'al uh sarirati khaira min alaniyati waj al alaniyati saliha. Oh Allah, make my inward better than my outward and make my outward righteous. Allahumma ja'al sarirati khairan min alani, khairan min alaniyati wa ja'al alaniyati saliha. Okay, that's dua. Right, of, um, you know, of the, of, of, of inward ratification and outward ratification. Right, so, so of course it's always an outward form, but the inward is the one that you should focus on. Um, as well, right? So an outward form as well as an inward reality. Uh, whoever exalts Allah, Allah exalts him. So these people, Allah answers them straight away because they they respond to Allah immediately. They pray and they fast and they do all the kind of good deeds, right? Uh, immediately, and and understand that Allah could place his secrets with the weakest people physically. So never look down on anybody at all. The next hadith, Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu reported, he said that the one who makes an effort for earning to be spent, you know, who makes efforts, right, he, he strives, right, on a, uh, for the sake of a widow, you know, or a poor person, a miskin, a destitute. He said someone who is, who's striving on the way of Allah, right, doing jihad. Or he says, or he said, or the Prophet could have said, like someone who stands in prayer and never, and never gets tired, Someone who always fasts and never breaks it, mashallah. And the one who strives in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see in this hadith again, you know, mashallah, it is a um, indication, right, uh, uh, to communal, to, to the community and to being good to the, and to be good to your, uh, society. Right, so the, and the weak, so again, there's, there's an emphasis on the weak ones. Right, so who are the weak in our society? Right, the widow. The widow is weak. And she has no husband in which she would um rely on and depend on, right? So 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 she needs someone to handle some of her affairs, because right? not everything you know a woman can do, especially in society that is um you know like a lot of uh areas is male dominated, right? So mashallah, she needs someone to actually help her out, you know, on these things for a widow and someone who's poor also that like, they have no name for themselves, they have no you know, positions in society. So if you are someone of position, you are someone of name, then you use your name for the benefit of the poor. You use your name for the benefit of the uh, of the widow. Right? So and he uh, uh and so such a person the, it is it is equivalent to, to to striving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the battlefield. Right? Because why why is it equivalent? Because both right uh, both situations it is to 
um, raise the you said raise the emblem or the sha'ir, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala in society. And right? so with jihad, it is to spread the da'wah to, to people who have not re- the da'wah has not reached, and we are striving between the widow and the poor. Right? It is to spread the spirit of Islam in communal living. Right? And then he said, you know, all like someone who is praying and does not get tired or fasting and never breaks their fast. Right? Why are they being compared to these people? Because these people are in continuous worship. And that people tend to only you know, equate prayer and fasting to be worship and nothing else. They just equate prayer and fasting is worship. Right? So Rasulullah SAW, many, many times you will see right, that he um, would correct the understanding and he would equate prayer and fasting to other forms of worship. Right? So if you are striving you know, for your own family, right? and, and there's a hadith of Umm Salama where she asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, uh, is there a reward for me that I look after the children of Abu Salama in that I would never abandon them as they are also my children? Right? And Rasulullah Sallam confirmed said to her that what that that yes indeed right, you looking after the children of Abu Salama it counts as charity to you. Right? Even though you say, but I, I won't even leave them, you know, like in the first place. Is this charity? Like is just something so natural for me to do to look after my children? And he said, Yes, it's charity. Right? So don't think you have to go out there and help a widow. Right, you are yourself, you are, you are, you are in need. Right? So when you, when, when you strive for your family, right, you have the reward of jihad. As we know, that when the woman came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they complained, Ya Rasulullah, the men get to go out and fight in, in, in battle. The men get to go and for janazah prayers. The men get to go and pray Jumu'ah Juma'a in the masjid. And we women, we're stuck at home with our kids right, in, our, in our household and we don't get all this stuff. And this is how much all the Muslims are. They're comparing deeds. And Rasulullah SAW gave her the good news and saying that a woman in her house, f- f- fulfilling her, her, her duties, right? she is like a man out there in battlefield fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? She is like, so, so, you know, mashallah, so if you find yourself, oh, I'm not able to spend so much time praying, I'm not able to spend so much time fasting, I'm not able to spend so much time with my dhikr because I have this, this work to do or this child to handle or this thing to do and whatsoever. Understand from the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu all of these things are worship. Right, so you are like that. Right? You are you're constantly on worship. Ya bakhtukum. How lucky you are. You're constantly on worship. You know, your children are forcing you on worship. Your job is forcing you on worship. Right? Whereas if you were to be praying or fasting, you might break it. Right? You might break this um you might break this kind of these forms of worship because just for yourself. When you do something for someone else, you tend to not break it. You know, inshallah. Inshallah. Alright, Haris explanation. These people have nobody to assist them and they wish too shy to ask. Right, mashallah, they have, they have, I know, effa, they have dignity, they will not ask. This expands our ideas of what is worship. Being of assistance to another, to other that is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Expand your idea of worship. What is worship? Right, being of assistance to others. Um, benefit is continuous. Right, when you help other people, the benefit is continuous. And that is why, um, and that is why, uh, the, the, it is like worshiping continuously. So when you help, you know, the 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 the, orf- the orphan, you help the um the, the the widow and you have the poor, right? The benefit is continuous, you know, mashallah. Um, and that is why it's as if you're praying without getting tired or you're fasting without stopping. The great virtue of helping of helping widows and orphans, and the poor, and the poor is that this is a type of jihad, no less. Do not belittle this kind of jihad. I don't think, oh, I have to be out there, I have to be at this much and that much. No, if you're if you hold, if you are fulfilling responsibility, you are doing an equal type of jihad. The virtue of helping each other, and then how beautiful it is that in Islam, how the weak and the poor are cared for, and how Allah exalts helping them and the reward of helping them. In the next hadith, Sayyidina Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrated. Right, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Whosoever supports two girls till they attain maturity, and means they reach, reach puberty, then he will come on the day of resurrection, me and him, like this. And he join his fingers together to show how close they are. MashaAllah, Ya Rasulullah. I may, may, may all of us be united with our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, so whosoever supports two girls, and it could be your own two girls, you know, your own daughters, Right? Or it could be two other girls, you know, like someone else's daughters or someone else's children. Or just, you know, um uh uh to, or just just uh you know, orphans, right? Orphan girls. 
Alright, so whoever supports two girls until they attain maturity, that means you bring them up and then you marry them off, right? So you bring them up to maturity and you marry them off and they are independent, then they are this close to the Prophet right? And here we see how Rasulullah SAW is um, correcting the mentality of people. He's correcting the mentality of people. I right? do not hate your daughters. Do not hate the do, do not hate girls. I don't think that girls are a burden. No, mashallah. They are your ticket to Jannah. Yeah, your girls are your tickets to Jannah. People used to hate having baby girls. They used to bury their girls alive. And Islam did so much to change this ideology and this mentality. Alhamdulillah, it is not inshallah is not existent in our society. You know, but I do know I do know some people they they, they do face it when they have girl after girl after girl. You know, people people will say, Oh, another girl, okay, next time get a boy. I mean what's wrong with having so many girls? Just have girls, right? What's wrong with that? Right? Or even if like even in our in our society they you know, they sometimes sometimes their comments make people dissatisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. You know, so like when you have boy after boy after boy and someone might say, Boy again, right, next time. Next time Allah will give you another boy, another girl, you know, that kind of thing. Like make people feel dissatisfied. If what Allah has allocated or a portion for them, right? Um, and if you and if you assist them, you know, till their maturity, then you are together with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as kafilul yatim, you know, as someone who looks after the yatim or looks after children, right? They are together with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hadith explanation: It is it is to change the mindset of people to love their daughters. The sunnah of using indications to illustrate the point. So he brought his fingers together together to be more impactful, to show how close is close. Right? And some scholars say the closest is how close the two fingers are to each other. And then some other scholars say the the, the indication is to show like if you, if you bring your two fingers together and you see how the difference between the pointer finger and the middle finger <coughs> right, if you see the difference, it's a very small difference in height between your middle finger and your point the finger and that's the difference between you and Rasulullah in position on the day of judgment as some of as some of the scholars have that opinion. Mm. The one who assists society, they are closest to the Prophet. Some Rasulullah loved those who assist society. Right? And mashallah um you know until puberty, I because puberty when they reach puberty, um that is when they're they're held accountable by themselves. And so the pen is lifted on three. A child until he reaches puberty, the one asleep until he wakes, and the one who has been afflicted with insanity until it is removed from him. And that is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> the great reward of looking after the poor and the weak, right? In 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 the view of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah brings them close to the Prophet. And what else do you want? The great reward of patience, you know, when you look after small children and you bring them up. Uh, it requires a lot of patience, right? So, and, and it's something that is so great. This is why many people can't take it and they just push their kids to other people to look after because they can't, they, they, don't, they don't know how to be patient. They don't know how to, 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 to nurture patiently and slowly, you know, mashallah. Patience and good nurturing of children is a reason of, for closeness to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, the final hadith for this series, for this, for this semester, عن أبي دردا رضي الله عنه عمير رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول بغو uh, سنة أبو دردا he he said that I heard the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say the assist me in seeking out the weak I means look for the weak I right? desire the weak and for indeed it is just that you are provided for and given victory by your weak members of society. Don't think that your victory is because of your strength or your numbers. No. I, but uh, but re- remember that Allah loves the weak. And when the weak make dua, I, they, it is their duas that are being answered. So when you have something to do, something important to do, go to your you know your weak and your feeble grandmother. Ask ask her to make dua for you. I go to the weak, you know, poor people or the weak um old people and ask them to make dua for you. And their du'as are answered. Right. So, un- so understand that you are given greatness and goodness uh, only by the du'as of the weak because they are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, the Sahabi Abu Darda, and there's a much other story about him, mashallah. He is as the, the great Sahabi Abu Darda. His name is Uwaymir uh, bin Malik in some narrations. He is the Qadi of Damascus, right? He, is the, the, was, a judge, he was a judge of Damascus. 
right? And mashallah, you know, um, there is a wonderful story of his Islam. It was narrated that Abu Darda was the last of the Ansar to become a Muslim. And the reason for this was because he used to worship a, an idol that he loved very much. Right? And so, you know, it, um, he would, he would beautify his idol, he would perfume the idol, he, he would, you know, adore his idol and so on. And so there were young, some young boys in society, you know, in, in, uh, in, in, amongst the Ansar, they would come to his house and they would scold him. They would say, why heck? Right? They would say, you know, woe to you. Right? Why are you pray, praying to this, to this stone here, stone over here? Right? And then they would, you know, and, and, and they would, they would say this to him. Right? And he would always defend his idol. So when he left his house, they went in, they took his idol, they, they, and they threw it, right, in the rubbish. So he went out, he found his idol, he got so angry with them. He brought it back, he cleaned it up, you know, he, he perfumed it, and he placed it on the altar again. The second day, same thing happens, they come around, they take the idol, they throw it out, right, uh, into the rubbish. Right, and, and the same thing happens, he comes, he can't find his idol, he goes out, he finds the idol in the rubbish bin, right, in, in, in the rubbish pile, right, and he curses all these boys, right, who keeps, who keeps throwing out his idols, his idol, and he brings it back, right, and the third time round, it happens, right, so he, you know, so this time round, he took his idol, he brought it back, he placed the idol on the, on the altar, and he gave the idol a stick, and he says, oh, idol, defend yourself, okay, I can't keep doing this for you, right, you get to defend yourself, Right, and then <laughs> of obviously it's a stone, right? It's a piece of stone, right? So the so the boys came again and took the idol, and, he, and now this, this time they threw the idol into some dung, right? And so when he came out, he saw his idol in the most pathetic state, and he's and he, he said to himself, "Why am I worshiping this? Right? It can't even defend itself. What more can it help me?" Right? So and that was, was the turning point for him. Right? He went home, and then he um he washed himself. Then he went to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi and he took the shahada and he became a Muslim, mashallah. Right, so he was to be a fuqaha and a hakim of the ummah, and he was a judge, right, in Damascus. Rasulullah testified for him by saying, "The judge of my ummah is Awamir. He used to love, he used to love to ponder and think and take analogies. Right, he narrated 179 hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. On his death, it was narrated that he came into the presence of some of his companions, looking very very sick, and they said to him, "What is wrong with you?" And what's 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 you know what's making you look so sick? And then he replied, "My sins, right? Of course, they meant to ask what's your illness, but he responded, my sins is wrong. Is what's wrong with me?' And then um they said they said do you, you know we mean do you need anything? Right? Do you need us to help you in any way? And his res- and and they were wondering that do you need medicine? Do you need some care whatsoever? His response was, I need Jannah. Right, my sins are wrong. Is what's wrong with me? But and I need Jannah. Then they changed that question again. They said, "Should we get a doctor for you to look into your to, to to care for you? You know, to look to look into your state." Then he responded, "The doctor is the cause of my state. He's the fault. Right, he's the cause of me being like this." And he just wanted to pass away, and eventually he passed away in Syria in the year thirty two um, Hijri. All right, the explanation of the hadith uh, here. All right, so uh, Rasulullah SAW said, "Assist me in seeking out the weak." I for indeed it is just that you all are provided for and given victory by the weak members of your society. Right? So Allah loves the weak and the poor. Their du'as are the ones that are being answered. I right? and this is a shift in the mentality of people, right? To honor the weak and the poor. Do not look down on them. In fact, you should go to them to ask for their du'as. As you will always see our teachers, the Habib, you know, the, the Habaib and the Mashaykh, right? They will always go to the weak people and they will ask for du'as from the weak. Mashallah. This is the greatness of such, um, of such, of such people, Mashallah. Right? Because they understand the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah used to say he loves the weak, uh, he loves the poor, uh, and, and he wants to be raised with the poor, Mashallah. And we should have the same desire. Victory is not at all by physical strength nor numbers, but by utter reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is by being true and sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. Right? It is about connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and closest to Him. Never look down on the weak amongst the believers. Victory is by the weak and you must understand this, right? So you need to correct this understanding. Right? There is a prohibition of seeking out the poor, eh, sorry, of seeking out the rich. Not poor and rich. Right? And admiring them for their wealth, right? If you are not to like, you know, run after the rich, or the popular, right? But to look after for those who are righteous and um, pious, mashallah.
Alhamdulillah, we've come to the end of our series. Barakallahu feekum. Bizzallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khaira Jallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ahlu. Bizzallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khaira. Bizzallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ahlu. Bizzallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khaira. Bizzallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ahlu. Al-Fatiha inna Allah rizqina manafi'a wa ala amalan khawasin mas'alin wa dalala al-huda wa yisuru biya qabil nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa rahim wa alimina wa ma shaykhina wa zawi al-hukhi alayna wa ila hadrat nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-fatiha Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika ishtu ala ilahi la anta astawfirku wa atubu ilayk wa sallallahu ala sallallahu Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته